Uh, in, in terms of testing, there are a variety of different things you use testing for, some of which we have uh, tests available for and have done throughout, some of which we do not. So I'm going to run through them because they're different answers to, depending on which you're talking about. S starting off with the antigen testing, which is testing for people who've currently got a disease. We initially were using that to help screen people who came from high-risk countries. When that ceased to be uh, a, a sensible policy, uh, we've moved on to testing people in intensive cares and in hospitals, and we have sufficient tests for that at the moment. The system for that is working fine and is being scaled up. So that side of testing is in place and is working well. So if the patient gets as far as a hospital, uh, we're confident on the testing and uh, on the scale-up. The thing we would like to do next, which would certainly make a difference less to the disease, but definitely to the NHS, is being able to test NHS and other critical workers who are self-isolating, who currently are not being tested because we do not have sufficient testing. And this is a global problem because basically every country is wanting this new test uh, which for a disease that wasn't actually uh, being tested for anywhere uh, three, three months ago. So um, everybody wants this. So there is a global shortage and that's a bottleneck for us. But the next priority is to get critical workers back to work or to say to them, you have got this. So we definitely would like that, not to fight the disease, but to support the NHS. Once we have more testing than we need for that capacity, then we want to go out to test a much wider range of people with mild symptoms. Some people are already having it as part of our surveillance system, but we would obviously like to go wider, but that's the prioritisation list. And then separately, there are the tests which uh, we will want to have which are not yet absolutely evaluated, but are going to be critical once you've got them, that can tell someone whether they have had the virus. So this is the antibody test. You can't do that in the first few days after someone's had a fever, but after uh, a, few, a few weeks, possibly as short as one week. And that will allow us to be able to say to NHS workers, to other workers, uh, look, you've had this infection at least for the short time uh, and possibly for quite a long time. We think it's likely you're protected against this and you can go back to work and be confident if you get another uh, cough and fever that is not going to be coronavirus. But that's, that's a sort of technology that's quite close, but, and it's being evaluated this week, uh, but it's not there. On the first one, our bottleneck is largely global shortages, which we are obviously doing our level best uh, to free up, because it would make it a lot, lot better for us to be able to test healthcare workers uh, now, for sure.